أهلا وسهلا فيكم استلهام من رؤية المملكة عشرين ثلاثين والمكانة التاريخية العريقة لحي الطريف في منطقة الدرعية تنطلق مؤسسة بينالي الدرعية بدور حيوي في رصد كافة الأشكال والممارسات الإبداعية كما تساهم في غرس قيم الثقافة والفنون وتأكيد دورهما في تحويل المجتمعات وازدهارها وتواصل المؤسسة جهودها مدفوعة بطموحها نحو ترسيخ مكانتها كمنارة ملهمة للمعرفة والتعليم بهدف دعم المجتمع الإبداعي في المملكة من خلال توفير منصات رائدة للمشاركة والتفاعل مع المشهد الفني المحلي المزدهر وفي الوقت الذي تشهد فيه المملكة سخما من التطور والنمو والازدهار يستضيف معرض بينالي أعمالا لأكثر من ستين فنانا مما يساهم بدوره في تعزيز واصر التبادل الثقافي بين المملكة والمجتمعات الدولية وإقامة حوار مشترك تعلو فيه قيم الانفتاح والتعاون وتقبل الآخر الأمر الذي سيعود على المملكة بمنافع ومكتسبات كبيرة لتصبح ثقلا مهما على الخارطة الثقافية والإبداعية الدولية وإضافة إلى جمالية المعرض تكتمل التجربة ببرنامجنا الثقافي الذي يهدف إلى إيجاد الحوارات الإبداعية الملهمة والعابرة للثقافات من خلال تقديم سلسلة متكاملة من الأنشطة الإثرائية المناسبة لمختلف الأعمار وفئات الجمهور والمستهلمة من معرض البيانالي وفنون وثقافة المملكة العربية السعودية والعالم وتساهم في تبادل الخبرات التعليمية وإتاحة الفرص للمشاركات المستدامة والتواصل المعرفي مع شخصيات رائدة في مختلف التخصصات داخل الساحة الفنية خلال البرنامج يتضمن محادثات وحوارات وجلسات تعريفية بالفن وزيارات مدرسية وأيضا مخيم للأطفال إضافة إلى ورش عمل ودورات احترافية تمكن الجميع من الاستمتاع والدخول إلى عالم الفن والثقافة ما تشاهدونه اليوم في بينال الدرعية لم يتواجد بين عشية وضحاها بل كان نتيجة شهور من العمل والتخطيط والبناء خلف هذه الأعمال المبهرة والفعالية رؤية بنيت من سنتين تقريبا عن كواليس رحلة إطلاق بينال الدرعية للفن المعاصر يشاركها معنا اليوم آية البكري الرئيس التنفيذي لبيانال الدرعية وفيليب تناري القيم الفني لبيانال الدرعية ووجدان رضا القيم الفنية السعودية التي كانت القيم الفني المساعد لبيانال الدرعية للفن المعاصر وشاركهم الحوار المعماري كولابات بانترساس مؤسس شركة واي التي عملت على صناعة السينماغرافي المميز للبينالي كما سيدير الحوار الدكتورة علياء السنوسي مستشارة وزارة الثقافة والتي شاهدت هذه الرؤية منذ بدايتها نتمنى أن تشبع هذه الجلسة فضولكم لما حصل وراء الكواليس وكيف اجتمعت هذه المجموعة لتحقيق ما ترونه اليوم شكرا Good afternoon and welcome Here we are the very first talk the very first panel of this incredible public program brought to you by the Diria Biennale Foundation team. And apologies for starting a little late. I think you can understand it's been a, a, a kind of really important moment for all of us um, to kind of come together and actually even amongst ourselves to remember the making of this Biennale. And in fact, the origins, um, let me introduce myself, I'm Alia Sanusi, and so privileged to be here and be able to moderate these four incredible people who have been a, a kind of a major part of the milestone of this moment. And I think it's really quite fitting that the story in a way starts with so many different family and uh, kind of connections from uh, college, from work, from life, from you know all around the world. But it, really the origin of this starts with another Biennale, uh, the Venice Biennale, when Phil uh, met with me and Sultan bin Fahad to talk about what it could be to be the curator of this moment. And then coming, that was uh, May of 2019, 
So before the world changed, um, and before this Biennale changed the world, and uh, we then came to Saudi in September of 2019, when Ayel Bekri joined as the CEO, and then in fact, his very first moment off the airplane was to her sister's home for a family brunch. So again, you know, all of these points of contact and nexus. With Jean uh, the kind of incredible, as Phil always says, co-curator of this of this this incredible moment, and I keep on using that word because I just don't even know another superlative to describe it. And uh, then Kulapat coming on board with his team at Y, uh, Brian and Jared, uh, who are here with us and who have been here with us, um, you know, in, in the heat of the summer and in the the, the bowels of construction, um, making this happen. And again, almost born out of many points of, of contact through the art world and then through the pandemic of Sultana and myself being in, in California during these lockdown moments. So I want to start with Phil and this idea of what you had of Saudi and actually the first attempts of bringing you to Saudi I think really are a, a testament to the change we see happening. You did a talk um, with Ahmed Matar um, at, a Basel, at Basel, Hong Kong and we you know, kind of moved heaven and earth to have you come to the Saudi Art Council 2139, but visas, and it was which consulate was gonna issue your visa, and it was Shanghai or was it Beijing, and it was at those moments when I was like tasked in London with being the person to take everyone to the Saudi consulate to get their visas, and it was impossible. It was literally impossible. Now, at the click of a link, before your credit card is even charged, you have your visa here. <laughs> so Phil, tell us about those first moments and kind of your ever-evolving process of making this exhibition, making this Biennale happen. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's so, first of all, um, thank you everyone for coming. And um, I want to say again, just how overjoyed I am to, to be here on the first uh, day that this exhibition is open to the, to the public. Um, you know, I, I'm obviously American, but I've lived and worked in, uh, in China for most of my career. Um, and I think the first contact I ever had with Saudi contemporary art was 2011, just before I started at UCCA. You and Abdullah invited me to it, and Lulu, my wife, who's here with me, to a dinner at Tom's Kitchen in, in Chelsea in London. Um, that was, I think, hosted by Edge of Arabia. And I remember meeting Abdullah for the first time, and, and shortly thereafter meeting Ahmed, and, and then we did the talk in Hong Kong. And you're right, it was super difficult. I think there were two or three times I was on some level supposed to come for 2139 and it just never, it never quite happened. One time I was, it was, I was in Oxford and trying to go, anyway. And then finally, Ali had said, you know, you, you just need to take this seriously. This is time to actually think about this. And we sat down uh, in Venice with, with Prince Sultan and with Ala, uh, who's also a member of the Ministry of Culture and had a really, frank and open conversation about um, what it might mean to make an exhibition here at that time. And it was so fascinating because everything was just so inchoate. So I think the ministry was itself only really founded in 2018. Um, you know, Desert X, I think, had just been announced. Um, there were other projects brewing. And, and yet it, there was this idea, this vague idea of a Biennale, but it was before there was any, you know, this is a foundation had yet to be set up and there, there wasn't quite a, a path to how that would happen. And then a few months, we sort of talked through the summer and then September rolled around and it was just at the right moment. And I, I it was the mid autumn festival in China. So it was a holiday. And um, at that time you could hop on a plane and go somewhere for a weekend. It seems like a, a, a luxury now. Um, so came here and, and spent just three days in Riyadh, just running around, meeting artists, uh, talking to people in the ministry, uh, meeting Aya, uh, meeting with John for the first time, and just having this very open conversation about um, you know, what this all might mean. We, I remember coming also to Jack's, which was still a functioning uh, warehouse. It was being cleaned out, and it was known that it would become a cultural district, but it was, there were still the sort of last stragglers um, doing shoes and shoes, makeup, shoes and, and makeup, and yeah, and, and, and heat, and it's really funny because now we have this piece by Yukonori and Nagi installed uh, at the entrance, you know, to building uh, what is that, building five, and um, that it, which is made of shipping containers, and that's exactly the place where the where the tractor trailers would would pull up. It was the loading dock of the uh, of the warehouse, um, and I, you know, I I was immediately struck by 
just how massive the, this moment of transformation was and how, um, how lucky and rare it was to be able to witness it in that way. And so I started to think immediately about like my whole understanding of, of China, which you know I, I started living there in the very early 2000s in 2001. Um, so I didn't witness the, the period of the 1980s, but it's you know UCCA when it opened in 2011, the first show was called uh, 85 New Wave, the birth of Chinese contemporary art. So there's this whole narrative about this transformation that took place at that time. Um, and it just struck me that it was, it felt like a similar kind of moment. And, and every artist I met that became clearer and clearer. Um, so I, I, that was a quick trip. And then I came back again in November for a more serious trip. And we, we spent time in Jeddah. And, then and had a very up. festive Thanksgiving in Jeddah uh, yeah. with, <laughs> with Faisal Tamar. With Faisal Tamar was sitting, seated right here, exactly. And I was like, at the time, it was like, I have this very fabulous curator coming, this really important man, Faisal. It's Thanksgiving. And it, he's American. <laughs> So he had a Saudi Thanksgiving. <laughs> but my first of two Saudi Thanksgivings now, actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I, I, and, then, and then was able to come back one more time in January for 2139 and, and Desert X. And, and at that point, it was, we, we knew we were kind of full speed ahead. And we actually thought we were doing this in 2020. So it was <laughs> already the time was running out. And then got back to China, and then you know, the world changed. And then we began this months long process of meeting all the artists again over Zoom, meeting some new artists, um, and starting to think about international artists and just beginning this whole curatorial process at a time when I think everyone in the world was figuring out what it meant to do our work in a different kind of way. And so I remember that first time when you walked into the ministry, you're like, this feels like a startup. It feels literally like a tech startup. All these young people, so excited. And I, I mean, I think you've, obviously a huge part of that change of it uh, still is a startup of course you know if we look at the kind of years but this transformation is so rapid it is so kind of the pace is so overwhelming I mean how has it felt for you to kind of start in that role I remember um, you know kind of your first moments of being at an international gallery in Paris straight out of college and knowing you wanted to be in the art world then realizing coming back to Saudi was so important for you like so many of our, you know, kind of young, this young Saudi generation, and, you know, kind of working at the kind of premier gallery slash, you know, um, art hub, in a way, at other. And then also questioning, you know, where is that future? Where, you know, do you then stay within the art world and leaving for a little bit, then coming back to it, and then coming back to this role, which, yes, of course, is a cultural institution, but also is, you know, so many other things that are probably not so fun in terms of the making and the construction and all of the rest of it. Thanks, Halia. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a very, uh, a very interesting, uh, an interesting time. Um, I mean, in terms of in terms of my my career, working in an in, in international gallery or or working in Saudi as well in the art world um, was kind of different, but also at the same time kind of the same, because there was when I came back to Saudi, I I, I noticed the uh, the potential of the amazing Saudi artists that just kind of needed some kind of nurturing, mentoring, working with, et cetera. So um, when, we, when, we were, when we started talking about this project, I was like, oh my God, it would be amazing if, you know, when, when Phil starts talking to them about their works in context with international artists, it would just change everything for them, change everything for Saudi and the scene. Um, and in terms of working in the institution, I mean, uh, it's, we, we do a lot of things. We do, you know, <laughs> we do um, the curatorial work with Phil and, and Wajdan and the team. We do the construction. We do, you know, we worked on, there's a lot of not very fun stuff. Um, but it's all part of the... the re <laughs> oh, procurement. Procurement. RFP. My favorite, favorite term. Yeah, but it, it, is, it, is how, it is how things have to work. But we kind of found the way, like found our way in, in, in figuring it out. But... It all adds, you know, adds a little bit of, you know, I would say, uh, flavor into the into the mix. We we, you know, our our day consists of so many different streams, so many different scopes, from you know, communications to construction to sonography to um, production of the works. You know, it's 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 a lot of it's so much fun, and it's it's also really you know interesting and challenging with with COVID happening. So, the the team had to you know figure out producing the works in, in, in kind of specific places and then getting, getting them shipped and then, you know, handling it properly and making sure that it's, you know, what exactly the artist wants and the curatorial, curatorial team wants. So 
it was a lot of moving parts, but I can't say anything other than I, I, love, I love it, I loved it. And uh, they have a lot of funny stories. Yeah, well, um, so, and yeah. so actually no, no art talk is you know, possible without mentioning Hans Ulrich Oberist. So I think that um, with, with Jeanne, we can talk a little bit about actually also with Jeanne's you know, journey of having been here um, and working in Athar. And I remember meeting her in the old town in El Bella during 2139. You know, we always have to talk about the, these kind of the origins in which we will later on in the day today. And for those of you watching online, if you can look up the, the talks later of um, Edge of Arabia and 2139 really being the kind of founding markers for so many of not just the artists, but also the you know, kind of creatives and, and cultural talent working in the industry. And Wijdan was tasked with being in the old town in El Belad with Ahmed Angawi. And I met her there and then was coming to London to do her master's um, at RCA. And I was like, you know, this is how you change people's like, hearts and minds. Hans Ulrich Oberist, who will be with us at the Biennale in February, inshallah. Um, I was like, Hans Ulrich, you have to meet this young Saudi woman. You must. And he's like, okay, okay, of course. You know, you must. It, it's urgent, as he would say. It's urgent. So Wijdan comes and, you know, as a very young woman, but very confident in her words and in her knowledge, um, able to talk to him about Saudi artists and in her role and, and there doing her masters. And I remember thinking this, she's so self-possessed. You know, this was so impressive. You know, she's coming back to Saudi. We need to find a, a, a kind of co-curator, assistant curator with Phil. Perfect person. And here she is and has really kind of flourished in the role. So tell us a little bit about those moments with Jen. How has that felt? Yes, um, looking back, oof, that was such a journey. Um, I still remember that well, day. Before you could drive, so yeah. you guys were shuttling around. Exactly. Right. Now, now Phil is like, Wijdan is a curator driver, <laughs> <laughs> running from artist studio to artist studio. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my new title. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been an interesting journey, to say the least. Uh, mm -hmm from the first day that we've met actually at Ahmed Angawi's exhibition. That was actually my first ever exhibition in Saudi. Um, it was a very challenging task at that time. And looking back now, I think it was the easiest exhibition that I've ever done. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was such an exciting moment um, speaking with Hans Oberus. And you know, in, in the span, I think of the 15 or 30 minutes that we stayed together, he um, he introduced me to so many incredible people, like he usually does. And uh, he introduced me to Antonio, I think he's here, and <laughs> introduced me to a lot of impressive and amazing people who uh, I'm very thankful that um, we can always continue the conversation around art with. And um, the first time that uh, I've met with Phil, we did that intense, very intense four day trip between Jeddah and Riyadh. For two days in Jeddah, we've met, I don't know, like truly a marathon. We met. I remember seeing the schedule and I was very happy. I was not on that trip. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was intense from I think 10 a.m., 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. Uh, we've seen around 30, 40 artists in a span of four days, which was intense and crazy. But looking back, I'm so glad that we ended up doing that because that was actually one of the last few moments where we had the opportunity to just go together, visit the artists in their physical spaces before COVID changed everything for us. Uh, but yeah, it's And Kulapat, one of the, the, the last pieces of the puzzle and a really important one, um, kind of having, having always been somebody with a very global outlook and you had come to Saudi as part of a, another proposal and another project and I remember you telling me after the fact, which I was actually very upset about because I felt like you know, we, we could have done so much more with your time here, but in the end, it was a blessing because this, you know, being you know, tasked with the sonography of this incredible momentous moment. Um, tell us a little bit about that first moment we came with you, the books, and I had books from, um, you know, sent all over the world from Amazon. The only thing that did work during COVID seemed to be um, about Saudi. And, really leaping into the scenography of this Biennale in the middle of a global pandemic. 
Well, thank you. Uh, I think, first of all, I mean, uh, the key word I felt from the beginning is this trust in the family. Right? I was felt that I was invited to, you know, literally the first time after the telephone call, we were at Sultan's house and he's cooking. Right? The idea that people come together, and I think that human quality that come through our working relationship come through in the work as well. You know, for me, I'm just a supporting speaker to my team, who's led by Brian Butterfield and Jared Beck, and also Emil, who's our graphic and many uh, uh, multi-talent designer. So this group of people working with, with, uh, with the curator has been a boot camp. It's literally a boot camp. I mean, like, I think there's weekly Zooms, of course. I mean, like, despite the fact that- and, uh, Crazy time zones being coordinated <laughs> exactly. around the world. And all of that, and of course, logistics, and we don't really know what the world will unfold to be. And so within that kind of uncertain time, I think uh, this particular mission has been something that holds mm -hmm. everyone together. The focus, right? It will happen. It will happen. And I think because of that, as the designers for the scenography, you know, we are somewhat like matchmaker. We, you know, uh, one part we have the curators, we have the artists, and we have the public, the people. And our job is to create a wonderful environment that everyone feel comfortable, feel curious, and then they can explore each other. And I think that was our job. So therefore, the intentions of the curators, the intentions of the artists, the comfort and the curiosity and intentions of the visitors, all of these kind of melt into this jacks, one to six, right? So how do we create moment that it does not become uh, a mushy thing, that the, the clarity of the ideas, the clarity of the experience stale within this diversity so that has been something that we try very hard to work with the curators team. And, you know, I just could not believe that <laughs> this, I mean, I work on many things like this, but uh, it really felt that this is an epic moment that uh, this boot camp has led to. So we're, we, we've gone through the battle, we've gone through the war, and we, we are victorious, I suppose. <laughs> So um, I and Phil, I think maybe a little bit about those first moments and first kind of conversations about, you know, the theme and thinking this process through. And actually, even then, of course, Saudi was changing, but I don't think any of us would have thought this was the Riyadh that we would be in right now. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess I, I, I did mention, you know, this this idea of this parallel kind of struck me very early on. And then uh, in the first few weeks of lockdown, sort of just sat down and, and laid out what I've been thinking. And that was actually basically the same six sections that we, we, we see now. Um, you know, so how do you think through this idea of being in this moment of great change? And at what points does it connect to other themes and kind of artistic creation um, globally? One thing that was really interesting was to be curating a show in a building that had not even yet been designed to be converted, right? Which is actually an experience I've had several times because this happens in China a lot as well. Um, uh, so that was, the, and that was why it was so wonderful to bring Y along so early in the process. Um, a few years ago, I, I got to curate a show at the Guggenheim and curators at the Guggenheim always say, any show you do, you have a second curator and it's Frank Lloyd Wright because you know, you're, always, you're always dealing with the building and thinking about not just you know, the order in which you see the art, but when you look across the rotunda, what do you see up and down? Um, and, this mean, and, and then I also work normally in Beijing in this giant, I mean, not giant Jack's style, but one room that's 1,800 square meters, um, which basically needs to be remade for every exhibition. So exhibition design for me as a curator is, almost, is, is as important as curatorial work. Um, and so when you think about like how the exhibition really took shape, I mean, I think there's two main moments. One was the, this marathon trip that Wedge Design refers to of running around and seeing lots of artists, and then the flow of, of calls and visits and things that happened over the ensuing year or two. Um, but the other was this weekly call that we would have, and it was, you know, it was always 11 a.m. in Beijing, 6 a.m. in Saudi, and 7 p.m. the previous day at the, in, in, in L.A. It's like the worst uh, time zone configuration you can think of. Actually, we, we were the lucky ones. Um, and we would sit there and go through jacks and say, okay, building one, this, that, move this here, move that there. Can we move this to that section? You know, 
that, and, and it was just this very, so come up with crazy ideas, move things around, move them back. Then at some point you have to make a study for each, each space, show it to the artist, see what they think, incorporate their feedback, come back to the design. Um, but I, I think we were agreed on one thing, which is, you know, I, I think a lot of us here have seen a lot of biennales in our life times and I, the, the, uh, the FOMO is the worst emotion in an exhibition, right? You, what you really don't want is for people to, well, some curators want this, but I, I as a viewer, like to be told uh, what to, not, not what to see and how to think about it, but to, to know there's, a, there's a, line, a through line that I can choose to jump onto or off of or ignore at my own pleasure or peril, um, but that at least you know, things aren't being hidden from me. Um, and so I think that was really important, and uh, at least for me, um, in terms of wanting to create a space that that you could that you could make a, that you could cross through, right? Like you could make a, a trajectory and a pathway through. Um, and, and with that established, and then to have these different sections kind of led to a certain kind of flow, and each one maybe has a slightly different feel, even slightly different soundtrack, right? You're in the first room and you hear the music from the William Kentridge piece, and then you go to the second room and you hear this electronic music from uh, Sarah Morris piece. All these, all these, you know, of course, juxtapositions among works, but also um, juxtapositions among different kinds of spatial conditions that you get, uh, which has to do also with the architecture. And so it was really interesting to have why actually working together with Brick Lab, the, who are participating artists in the exhibitions, but who are also the architects, who I think most people here will know, a very important yeah, young Saudi architecture firm, who designed the conversion of, of Jax to in a more general sense. So that the idea that you could, and then, and then to get Emil and the Studio M team involved in the graphic identity at the same time, it's really quite exciting because you have, you know, you have artists coming in and proposing projects, um, and that's a whole other story, right, mm -hmm. of, of essentially soliciting, asking people to pitch something and then going through and trying to workshop that and get it to a point where it makes sense on every level from budgetary to feasibility uh, to conceptually. Um, but th all of that happening at the same time as you're thinking about you know, the space and how it's going to feel for this edition of the exhibition, but also how it's going to feel you know, in, a, in, a longer, in, in a longer term and what, what it's going to be like to, um, to put this place you know, on the map here. So, and Not to be cliche, but the word that we hear over and over the last two days has been groundbreaking. And that this will be a groundbreaking moment. And you know, maybe I and Wijdan, a little bit of kind of young Saudi women, what does this mean for you? Um, this is, of course, is a Biennale in a global context, but it's also very much about the community. It's about this place at this time, in this moment. And you know, one of the more you know, kind of bittersweet but poignant um, moments I've had with a dear friend has been, you know, she never thought this was the world she would be living in now, and in the best way. But then she's also, what what about her youth or what about her her kind of you know what happened there? But so proud and hopeful for the future. So what does this mean for this moment? Thanks, Halia. Um, if I may, uh, honestly, it's, it's, it has been groundbreaking and I think it was also a very interesting uh, and really, uh, it, I can't explain how, how, how things, how it feels because it's, it's, it felt, when, we, when Phil was talking about, you know, working with Brick Lab and why and, and, and everybody, it was, it was kind of like, building the plane while flying it, <laughs> honestly. Because <laughs> we would get on these calls, and honestly, they were really amazing calls, because it was like talking about the works, but before, but also talking about the space for these works, that also are gonna talk about construction of that space, of that work, so it was like, which one is it, which one is it? But it was so nice actually having everyone um, really, really be on the same page and, 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 and become friends, and I was like, guys, please, we're, we have to we have to think of it like a family. Please, please make it work. Make it work. And they all like you know got on these calls and then became friends and then became friends and had like WhatsApp groups. And I was like so happy. But then we would talk about okay, now we're done with the works. How are we gonna do this like community engagement? How are we gonna you know speak to the speak to, to our audiences? Because honestly, as a foundation, as as an, as a person, and this is a personal also. Um, this is something that I feel um, really strongly about is the fact that I want to really make sure that the youth and you know the 
the local audiences, the international audiences, regi regional audiences are super um, involved and really, really engaged with the exhibition and with the biennial. So, you know, whether it's from really, really making sure that there are these school groups or people attend the public program, which I'm really happy is, is, is happening because and, and I don't. I didn't want it. We didn't want it to be so conventional. We wanted it to be so so different and so um, interesting and, and 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 engaging with everybody, all all ages. Um, you know, um, kind of just being very inf informative and educational to everyone. Um, and I, I, it's so nice that everyone's a part of it. Even today's panel. You know, it's really nice that we're talking about you know the scenography of the exhibition, the architecture of the of the space, the. The, the curatorial element, the you know the public program is a huge, huge, huge stream and scope of this of this groundbreaking moment. Honestly, um, so it's it's a, a lot of like it's a mix of really, really nice feelings. I have to say, um, and I I'm, I'm really happy to see the plane actually flying. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so um, yeah, and 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 I'm I'm so happy we're we're part of this, and I'm so I'm. I feel we're very blessed, and I'm, I'm very grateful that um, that I get to be part of this this movement, um, you know, and and in my country that's 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 so fast paced, but it feels amazing. So I'll leave it with which Dan as well, and I'm sure she has a lot I mean, a lot to say. Even just like the, the the driving story, you know. Yeah. I mean, from those moments of just logistics and making things easier and making things possible, um, which Dan, I mean, even over the course of your your career and, and your moments of working in the art world here and then in London and then coming back. I mean, you were just, uh, now you're here, you know, working in, in different contexts um, in that way. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the most important moments, I guess, in my life was, um, and it's important to highlight, I, rem I still remember when I told my dad I wanted to study art and he told me he, I was crazy because <laughs> um, there was virtually no art scene, to be honest, to, to kind of go back to and, and, and kind of work in and all of that. And, um, you know, there, Saudi art and contemporary art always existed, but now we have the platform to actually showcase it uh, in a bigger scale. Um, there was always great efforts um, in the Saudi art scene from the Saudi Art Council to the galleries to Mansouria to all of that and now we have even a bigger opportunity to expand the, the reach to wider audiences and general audiences and it was very important to also include glimpses of that, of, of that existence of the contemporary art scene um, in the first section of the, of the Biennale. Uh, and it was honestly from from all the 5 a.m. actually fell <laughs> calls with <laughs> with why and uh, then it became 7 a.m. and all these kind of early conversations and the consistent uh, support from all the teams that are involved has been absolutely uh, incredible and I truly cannot believe that we're finally here with everyone kind of in attendance and, and seeing <laughs> flying. Honestly, just uh, 10 days ago, it didn't look uh, as nice. <laughs> so, I mean, not to like kind of harp on the subject, which I always find sometimes cliche when one talks about women in Saudi Arabia. You know, what, what does your father think now? You know? Uh, um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yeah. all is good. <laughs> He's very proud. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that he trusted uh, my decision to kind of go through with an art degree. <laughs> Um, and I'm very grateful to be part of this scene, uh, to be honest, and uh, for the opportunity to be, to be working with Phil and working with Wayne, working with I and everyone. Um, I always kind of also look back to my time at, at Ether when I first worked with, mm -hmm. with Aya, <laughs> and it was a completely different art scene, completely different landscape, and to be able to do something of this scale, and actually, instead of being stranded at Al Balad at like 9 p.m. with no way to kind of go back, <laughs> uh, now we're able to kind of freely kind of go and, um, you know, uh, visit the artists and their physical spaces, continuing the journey, continuing the conversation. Uh, it is truly um, life-changing, uh, this moment in every single aspect. Um, and it's always 
great to also look back at the early moments of the contemporary art scene and see, honestly, the, the amazing things that were happening and also to continue highlighting that as well as highlighting the emerging voices in the art scene through this particular platform. And so cool upon perhaps, you know, speaking a little bit on behalf of your team, who I know we have um, Brian hopefully coming back in February with Jared to talk um, and, and to teach, I think at this point, we are now transitioning not just from talking about behind the scenes and the making of the Biennale, but really what happens next. And you know, you as somebody who's a sonographer, but also you know, build physical structures. You know, how do you see that difference um, in terms of the space, but then in terms of what happens next uh, with the Biennale? Well, I mean, I think we're all here, right? Because we know and we believe that art has power. And a lot of that power has to do with placement and making connections to people. I think that's what it is. And with uh, our team, I think we are very fortunate to have Brian and, and Jared. Well, and also, I mean, we also have to think about just the ability to move, right? Mm -hmm. Phil was not able to leave China for mm -hmm. a significant period of time. And we were very lucky that somehow being American in LA, getting to Saudi was much easier than anybody else being able to move anywhere else. That's very true, that's very true. And I think in that uh, process. And in July. Yes, so <laughs> let's just remember absolutely. that. But you know, I, I also want to, you know, in a way, uh, credit and talked about the, the connections we have made, right? For example, Brian, who's an uh, architect, designer, worked within a museum before, as a carpenter, so he understands how to make things and make things happen. Jared himself, uh, who's an amazing exhibit designer, is also an artist. So he understands the psyche of an artist, a young person who's showing in Benali for the first time, the anxiety of possibilities. I think this kind of relationship, this kind of understanding goes into the work. So you know what this has made is not just a construction, but it's really relationship and friendship that will continue. That, you know, I, I look at these and how many new people we have met through how many lessons we have learned, how many discoveries we have had. So, you know, I think working on museums, I think that's our belief and our faith that art will continue to make people understand why life is worth living and, and be able to do that. And I think starting from, from my team, who are passionate about art and really practicing art, and so for all of us to be able to work with artists and help them, you know, kind of connect with other people. And so this idea of family, I mean, you, again, not to be cliche, but in a way cliches are cliches for a reason. This idea of family and hospitality. And, you know, the first moments for so many of us meeting really wasn't in, in family settings. So Phil getting off the plane here on his first trip, going, you know, to Best Man Ann's house, meeting Aya there, Friday lunch with the family, Coolapot coming over to Sultan's for Sunday dinners. Brian coming over for Sunday dinners, us, you know, you know, having these moments. Um, Wijdan, you know, taking everyone to Ahmed's studio in the hospitality, the artists show here in their studios. Uther also not being a normal commercial gallery. You know, you can't describe Uther as just, oh, a, a normal commercial gallery at all. It was a space for so long that was the only space that people came together and were able to meet like-minded people. Um, who cared about art, or who wanted to work in the arts, or wanted to be part of this world. Or even wanted to be part of the international world. So Athar, you know, goes to all these different art fairs and, you know, also hosts a lot of international artists. So they kind of also created a lot of that context um, between, and dialogue between international, the international world and the Saudi artists. It, it, it definitely is, is, is kind of one of the foundations and the main places that we all, you know, we met. and we, you know, all the artists also met at, so, yeah. Yeah, no, and that's, I think that's something we really tried to acknowledge in the exhibition is, uh, you know, having worked in China for so long and for, for so many years, the discourse was always about the new thing, right? And the new, new art from China. And um, I, I, I really wanted to try and highlight the fact that this is, this is not coming from nowhere, right? There's a biennial happening now because there's been so many years of work by so many people, including, <laughs> these three women on, on the stage and many people in the audience. So uh, we, we tried to acknowledge that at different places. And that's why, like, for example, you know, uh, Manala Doyan's work is from 2014, right? It's not a, it's not a brand new piece. I mean, this is a, a piece that's been, that's been seen before. And that, uh, you know, 
at 2139 at a certain point or in, in Europe at a certain point, but that um, can now come back and be part of this new context, I think is just, you know, I, I really wanted to not, I didn't live that history, but I wanted to, um, you know, acknowledge the point at which we're coming into it. And so just on that point, in terms of your curiosity, you know, as a unique individual and somebody who I, I you know, adore and, and know that you understood how do we go to the next stage in terms of the making of the BNL, but kind of overcoming these ideas and prejudices? You know, what do we say to a global audience um, watching us right now that hasn't been here yet? That's for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, it, it's very one. Okay, so we just we're getting to the end, but you know, it, one thing that was really interesting was when I first started, was first invited to think about taking this project on. I had conversations with different people in the museum world and related, and, and just the level of discouragement I received. People saying you're crazy um, on many different levels, not just the obvious, but also. Like there's no way that will actually ever happen. Um, people will tell you that you know customs is sorted and it won't be, or you know these. I mean, just the, these kind of horror stories of things that would happen in the future were, were just there were so many of them, and and yet I think you know coming here and seeing for yourself uh, this energy. I mean, if people who uh, last night the feeling in the halls and in that courtyard, it's just so special. There's this incredible op optimism and openness and just um, readiness to to embrace. So I, I think that the most important thing is just to bring, to get more people to come in and see for themselves and, and make their own judgments and have their own experiences because that's, I think that counts for, for more than just about anything. And so hopefully this will be a platform for those kinds of um, exchanges to happen and, and a reason for, for more people to to come to this place and to discover the artists here and, and to engage with you know, all, all the people here. <clears throat> and I and Wijan, perhaps you as what what are you hoping to see happen next? I mean the next years and the next the next moments. I mean this show has been so really a seminal moment and we've only seen it fully installed for two days. I have to say three days ago I actually didn't think it would happen. <laughs> so two days ago it did. Um, yeah, two days no but two days ago it well there was a lot of people. <laughs> I mean it wasn't easy. We have 13 companies working on this project. So customs is a huge also uh, stream, but alhamdulillah, I mean, also having the ministry, you know, um, support us is beyond yani, imagination. I, 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 can't, I can't thank anything or anyone, and mo you know, more. Um, Prince Badr's support in the ministry is, is phenomenal. So thankfully it, it, all, it all worked out, but there is a lot of people, there was a lot of people on site. Um, what I want to see, honestly, is, I mean, t today we, we mark history in kind of putting the Raya on the map, um, Saudi on the map as well. Next year we'll put it more on the map with the Islamic Biennial, inshallah. And then the year after we'll put the Raya more on the map by growing the exhibitions around the Raya, around Saudi, uh, hopefully more. So I, I, I am so, I'm so optimistic um, with the future. So, Wijdan, I'll leave it to you in, 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 in your hopes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think this is only the start of a, and the beginning of a, of a journey, but we're really looking forward to see how this Biennale can also uh, influence the art movement and encourage more of the new voices to, to rise and to, to be a space for inspiration. So that's our hope and what we're aim, aiming for in the next And I think what's quite important is that the closing of the Biennale coincides with the opening of the next edition of 2139, uh, curated by Venetia Porter, uh, another kind of seminal person in the history of Saudi contemporary art or Saudi art and, and really in a global sphere at the British Museum, but her work here just as a person and friendships and, and those interactions with artists. So that closing is, is quite a poignant moment and will be, I think, for all of us to to celebrate and say what's on to the next. Uh, if we have any questions from the audience, please raise your hands. Uh, oh, we have a question right here. I can speak louder, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, talking about building the plane, and actually includes all mentioning a few names, but really, really, who was the engineer of that plane? 
<laughs> well, I guess you can say like Boeing is, 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 uh, <laughs> is a company um, uh, comprised of many, many individuals. So I would say that it's, it's, it's an absolutely, I mean, there, there were like precursors of foundation. So we could even trace it back to so many moments. We talked about Edge of Arabia. We talked about Saudi Art Council. We talked about Venetia, British Museum, these shows that happened around the world. And then we talk about individuals who were then trained at Ether, trained you know, in different contexts or conversations that happened at Art Basel Hong Kong, conversations that happened at the Venice Biennale. <clears throat> there were so many moments and, and touch, you know, milestones and touch points. Any, any other questions? Otherwise, uh, please, this is the, the conclusion of our first talk. We're so excited and please go in, see See the show again, join the program. There's a, a kind of vast children's program also happening, so um, please uh, check out the website. We have a booklet. Yeah. Oh, question? Yeah. Uh, hello. Maybe you should, you should start to get this moment to NFTize the Biennale. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, why not? That, that, could be, that could be the concluding project. Yes, sure. <laughs> I Thank think, you. I think there's an NFT uh, workshop uh, in, the, in the public program. Oh, it's so happening. This, actually, yes. there is an NFT happening, uh, an NFT workshop happening this afternoon. Yeah. So. Simon Denny um, will will be doing that, and then going straight to Boulevard, which is also his his dream dream moment today. Wow. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.